Peace and greetings, peace and greetings to the family. Brother Divine here on this beautiful Monday down here in Huntsville, Alabama. You know, today is day 15 of life as an entrepreneur. Like I say, so today is Monday, so it's a manifest Monday. And of course, we're going to be making a, a creation today. And the reason why I decided to go ahead and show you guys how to do this, because I actually have a piece that I have to um, remake or whatnot, because uh, I don't know how the the cord or whatever snap, but it snaps. So I have to recreate a piece. But um when I was thinking about doing this, I found out like, damn, I don't have any black cord. I have to use this brown cord. So I'm going to still do the piece, but it's not going to be the one I'm going to make for the sister, uh, remake for the sister since uh, it snapped on her or whatnot. And uh, that's just one of the things that happens sometimes with jewelry. But I pride myself on my craftsmanship. So, you know, everything has a lifetime warranty on all of my jewelry just in case, you know, things like that happens because sometimes it does. So, but today, guys, what we're going to be making is uh, what I like to call a leather triple wrap cuff bracelet or whatnot. And uh, as you see, these are just gorgeous or whatnot. Um, they're versatile. Uh, you know, these are for like, kind of like men bracelets. A lot of women buy these too, but you know, I, I kind of made these for the men or whatnot. And uh, like I said, I just really love the style of, uh, of bracelets or whatnot, of cuff bracelets. And uh, like I said, they're versatile. Uh, you can do so many different things with them. As far as like changing the beads, uh, you can put, use darn near ever any type of bead, as long as you know you can fit it in and uh, into the grooves of these uh, these channels or whatnot of these uh, of the leather. Or like I say, also the uh, as long as your uh, needle and thread and all that can go through. So. Like I say, I like to use fire polished beads when I make these uh, style bracelets or whatnot. Uh, but you can pretty much use any type of bead you really want. It's it's really, uh, there's no limits on making these type of bracelets. Uh, and as you see also, um, it has a button clasp on it. So that's another thing I like to you know play around with. Change up the button clasps on the uh, on the pieces themselves or whatnot. And like I said, it's just some uh, very rustic, uh, you know, uh, very kind of, uh, I'm not gonna say a brutalist style, but I'm gonna say maybe kind of goth a little bit, depending on what the, the color beads that, you know, I can use or whatever, uh, and the clasp and all that. And like I said, I, I just really like these these style of uh, cuff bracelets. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to make, guys. Uh, you know, that's new to the whole jewelry making. You can add this to your arsenal or whatnot. And uh, I guarantee you, it'll get a lot of attention, especially with that Chinese knot right there. That, that, that just accentuates the piece even more or whatnot. Like I say, you can just play with the button, you know, changing different buttons. I mean, if you go to Joann's or Michael's, you see they have all type of different type of buttons. So you can really, really jazz this up uh, as you want, you know, and uh, also, you know, make it longer to actually make chokers or whatnot, which I haven't done yet, but pretty soon I'm gonna start making chokers. And this piece, you really don't need a lot of tools or whatever uh, to make. You're gonna need just uh two two uh cords or whatnot and uh two leather cords and uh they're gonna need to at least be like 36 inch, uh, 36 inches in length uh and let me grab my ruler real quick and I'll show you because that normally and these uh pieces right here I want to say they're about the the same length let me see. So yeah, 36 inches, that'll get you probably like a, a eight inch bracelet or whatnot uh, from end to this end right here or whatnot. Oh, I can't see that. I thought y'all could see that. But yeah, that'll run probably like uh, eight inches or whatnot. So, um, and it just depends on who you're making it for, how long you want to make it. Like I say, you might be making an actual choker or something like that. So you might, you know, need more, but for this tutorial, like I say, 36 inches and you'll have some access and, uh, you know, uh, at the end of cut off. So that, that should be efficient. Cause like I always say, you rather have too much cord than not enough cord because you can always remove, but you can't add on once you get started with these pieces. So. 
So yeah, uh, you're gonna need those cords, like I was saying, 36 inches. Uh, like I was saying, uh, your beads, you're gonna need uh, whatever beads you choose. That's what I like about this style. Um, I'm gonna use fire polish beads, and I'm probably gonna use, let's see if you guys can see, I'm probably gonna use these uh, silver ones right here and these red ones. And this is gonna be like a little personal piece for me uh, to keep for myself, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna make a tutorial and show you guys, but you can use these fire polish beads, you can use gemstone beads, you can use uh, bicone beads or whatnot. Like I said, it's pretty much versatile, whatever you can fit in that channel or whatnot. Uh, you know, with your cords, that's pretty much, you know, you can you can use to uh, uh, for your piece or whatnot. Uh, also, you're gonna need, let me find my wire. You're gonna need a thick gauge wire uh, somewhere in between like 16 and 18 gauge wire uh, you're gonna need this for the actual let me show you the part right here where you're gonna pretty much cinch everything together all the cords so you're gonna need that because and also you're gonna need these uh, bell making pliers or uh, if you have maybe like some um, like a mandrel or something like that something to just to you know um, loop around so you can actually fit all those four cords and i'll show you what i'm talking about later but it's, it's better to have these bell making pliers for that type of thing um and also um you're gonna need a button for the closure or whatnot just whatever like i was saying uh, earlier it's versatile whatever buttons you want to choose um i found these buttons right here that i thought were pretty cool it's the actual compass so that's what I'm gonna to use today, this actual compass um, button clasps. So you're gonna need one of those. Um, also, you're gonna need some cutters as far as tool wise. You're gonna need some cutters. You're gonna need your, uh, like I was showing you earlier, you're gonna need some bell making pliers. You're gonna also need your chain nose pliers or your needle nose pliers or whatnot. Uh, you're gonna need some, uh, some threading, uh, excuse me bead weaving thread or whatnot i got today this uh wildfire or whatnot you can use fire line whatever is more suitable for you or whatnot and uh, also always get the black when i first started making these i kept getting white and i was looking i'm like on the edges it, it was just so noticeable so um even on this brown core you still won't be able to really notice the black uh beading thread like you know uh using instead of using the white so uh, make sure you always get the black thread um, beating, beating thread or whatever and of course you're gonna need some needles you're gonna need some be uh, threading needles or whatnot and I'm gonna try to do this on camera to show you guys how to actually thread one of these needles I know that was the most challenging and most intimidating thing I encountered when I first got into this style of jewelry making, especially like the seed beads and all that, you know, you, you're pretty much using needle and thread to do a lot of those pieces. So I'm gonna show you guys a trick that I learned that helped me and hopefully I'll be able to do it on camera and I don't embarrass myself. But since I'm just starting to do these tutorials, I'm pretty sure I might, so. But we're gonna find out in just a hot second, guys. Okay, so I already uh, threaded a needle Where's my needle at? I got it over here. Oh, here we go. I already threaded my needle over here, the one I'm gonna actually use. But I'm gonna show you guys how to actually thread one of these needles. Cause like I said, that was one of the most toughest things. I swear to you, man, when I um, <laughs> got to doing the whole CB stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick trick. What I like to do is, um, I'm gonna take this in right here. I like to take the end, and as you see, I got my my uh, pliers right here, and I like to take the chain nose, and I like to flatten that wire. I mean, excuse me, I said wire this thread out. And what I'm doing, I'm just pressing on it, just kind of pulling up, and you see it how it flattens it out a little bit more. I don't know if you guys can see that. No, why it's not zooming for me. Let me see. There we go. You see how I flatten it out a little bit more? So, 
now that it's flattened a little bit, it makes it a whole lot easier for me to go ahead and thread it. So I'm trying to make sure you guys, and what I do is I just hold it in one hand, find that open end right there. I knew this was gonna happen the first one I just did. It slid in like butter. I knew I wouldn't be able to get it a first try, so let me try again. And sometimes that happens. Don't get frustrated. But this, I swear to you, this is the easiest way to do this. There's no other way I've seen. This is the only way that's easy, I swear. And I could be going in the wrong side. Uh-oh, did I get it? I think I got it, guys. I think I got it. And I got it. See that? So that's how you pretty much thread those needles, guys. That's the easiest way I've seen. And it's gonna take some, you know, some practice, if, especially if you're like new to this or whatnot. So that's the easiest way to thread your needle, guys. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the next part of this whole project, and this is gonna be the Chinese knot, right? So don't be intimidated as well with this part of the piece. This might take you a little minute to get used to. Um, it took me a while to get used to doing the Chinese knot, but after that, um, pretty much it just came like second nature or whatnot. So I'm gonna show you this, guys, and I'm gonna walk you all the way through it. So you take your two cords, and uh, since I'm right hand, I'm gonna make my loop down here, right? So I might need to adjust the camera because I wanna make sure you guys see what I'm doing. But you, you, what you wanna do is you're gonna take that top part, well, excuse me, the bottom part of the loop, like this right here. And, and these cords, they, they all curly and stuff. They've been wrapped up, so. But you wanna go up. Then you're gonna come down, right? I might have to. Let me see. Hold on, these cords, like I say, they so curly. Keep curling up on me, it's kind of making it harder, wouldn't it? Like I say, this is just something you just got to take your time with. Rome wasn't built in one day. We all know that. Just take your time. You'll get it. Trust me. If I could, if I can get it, I guarantee you guys, you'll be able to get it probably even faster than me. It took me a couple trials or whatnot. So, we'll start this again. And you, you see how I, I'm going over the top, kind of making a loop up here, right? It's kind of kind of gonna look like a little pretzel or whatnot. It's gonna look real, real funky. All oh, these cords are kicking my tail. <laughs> And then I'm trying to do it in a way so y'all guys can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's one of the things I forgot. <laughs> I haven't done this in so long. But yeah, you just put some down right there. Pretty much, let me start all over again. Y'all seeing them, let me catch my mojo like I haven't done one of these in a minute. But anyway, you wanna come down it's kind of like I said, it's going to be kind of like looking like a little funky pretzel or whatnot. Now what you're going to do now, you're going to take these two end cords right here. While you see how I got it holding or whatnot. And you're going to go under, over, under, over, under. Now watch what I do. I'm going to show you guys what I mean. And like I said, it's going to take you a couple tries to actually get used to doing this. But I swear, once you get the hang of it and get, you know, the actual rhythm, 
of the method of how to do the Chinese knot, it'll be real, real simple, guys. So you see, I went under. Now I'm gonna go over. You see, I'm still trying to hold them two joints in place. Oops. Okay, then I'm gonna go under these two cords right here. I still got up oh, there. We go. Make sure I had them. And you're gonna go over these cords. And then you're gonna go under these cords right here. I kind of, when you get it on the end right there, kind of still hold it, but go ahead and start pulling on it, and it's gonna look crazy at first. But everything's gonna play out how it's supposed to play out. And that's your Chinese knot. Now, you see how I got mine right? And you're probably gonna have to adjust it. So, what you wanna do is to get it even on both sides. I kind of like have to fiddle with it a little bit. That's my grandma would say fiddle. <laughs> Got to fiddle with it a little bit to readjust it or whatnot. And then also it'll give you a chance to adjust this top loop because this is your top loop. This is where your button is going to go through on the other end of your bracelet. So this will give you a chance to actually adjust all of that right there. And it's just a cute little uh, you know, embellishment, you know, a cute component on these bracelets, these little Chinese knots, it just adds kind of like some more definition to it or whatnot. So, uh, where am I trying? Oh, yeah, I gotta go down. And like I said, it's gonna take a little adjusting or whatnot to get it at the, uh, at the proper length that you're trying to get at on both ends. Just keep, you know, don't tighten it to the point where it's kind of, you know, real tight for you to uh, adjust it or whatnot until you get to the point where you know that you got it on uh, pretty much on both ends lined up. I'm going to come down just a little bit more on this end, I think. These curly cords. Yeah, I'm going to come down just a little bit. So, but like I say, that's that's pretty much, that's maybe like the hardest part of this piece for real, doing the Chinese knot and, thread, and threading your needle. Those probably like, you know, in this little session right here, those will probably be like the two hardest things for you to do, especially if you're uh, very, very new at, you know, making jewelry or whatnot. This is not an advanced piece, but it could get a little difficult to newbies or whatnot. Especially, like I said, with that Chinese knot. And um, until you get adjusted to it, just keep watching the video. Just rewind the video back or whatnot. And uh, just to get that, that uh, under, over, under, over, under technique. But yeah, that's, that's the hardest part. So right now, I pretty much got it where I want it. I'm just really adjusting it to make sure like I say, you want to make sure you don't make this uh, loop too big. You want it where your button's going to fit properly or whatnot and snug. So, you know, it doesn't come loose or anything like that. So this is just me just kind of just playing around a little bit. Not playing, but I'm just adjusting it. Make sure I got it properly where I want it at. Because this is going to be a personal piece I'm going to keep for myself, of course. Because I love wearing all of this jewelry stuff. So, you know. You know, but yeah, that's pretty much it right there. Okay, so the next part, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and tie, uh, want to tie off on the uh, tie off on the end of this leather cord or whatnot. Since we're going to start weaving or whatever, so hope you guys can see. You're just going to tie just a simple little knot or whatnot.
simple little knot. You want to do maybe like three or four knots on the end of your cord down there. Just to make sure everything is sturdy and secure. And you want to make sure you leave yourself enough thread on the end. Because we're going to use that other end of the cord. I mean, excuse me, the thread to uh, weave back in into the piece itself to uh, just make sure it's uh, more secure on both ends or whatnot. So, let's say you want to make sure you got enough cord. Let's say you just want to do about three or four of these knots on the end. Right there. Make sure it's tight or whatnot secure. It is so weird doing these videos, making jury. I gotta have this camera the way it's set up and I just need to invest in those little, uh, they got some glasses, whatever, with the camera with them. I need to invest in those. Cause this setup that I got going on is kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you, it's kind of uncomfortable. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing and also, you know, be comfortable doing this is kind of hard but like i said we're gonna get through it and it's all in the sake of showing you guys man how to make some of this jewelry man so all the crafters that might have been interested in learning how to make jewelry or whatnot this got this is for you guys these these pains that i go through i swear it's for you guys and it's worth it so we're gonna get through it so like i say I, i'm gonna use fire polish beads so what you want to do is starting off uh, whatever sequence of how you're going to you're going to lay out your um, your beads. You want to go ahead and do that. I'm sorry. I don't know if you saw that. But yeah, you want to just go ahead and excuse me, put them in the order of how you want everything to line up on your bracelet. All right. I'm going to sit these. That should be OK over there. So what you want to do is. First run, well, I say about the first two runs will maybe be your hardest because everything is kind of like going to be loose. And then, you know, you got this such of uh, in the middle, you got this big old gap or whatnot. But what you, as you work your way down the piece, everything will start, you know, uh, cinching up a little bit tighter or whatnot. And it won't be as like wide or whatnot. It'd be a whole lot easier. So what you want to do is you're going to take your needle and you're going to go under the cords, right? And you want to kind of like have your your finger on the on the back side of that and kind of work your way up. And like I say, your cord, excuse me, your needle is behind this cord, right? So, and also you, when you do this, you don't want to be uh, this first run. You don't want it too. Uh, close to the top or whatnot, and you'll see why later on or whatnot. So, as you see, I, I got my finger and I got, I'm holding them right. So I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, this is gonna be the hardest run right here for you guys, especially if this is like your very, very first time doing it because everything is loose. But I swear, at, the more runs you add to it, the more easier it'll be. Everything will tighten up since cinch up how it's supposed to so just make as long as you got your finger right there you should be okay and i hope you guys can see i might have to change my camera because something but pretty much just make sure as long as your fingers there is pretty much you know holding it and then you're going to take your your thread needle, now you're gonna go actually on the top of the core and you're gonna go through the same hole of your beads or whatnot, All right? So make sure you get them in all the holes on your beads. I said we're going right back through the same holes, but we're just at the top of the leather core instead of the back end. So, once you got them in, pull your threading cord tight or 
whatnot. And that's your first row of uh, your bees. Okay, guys. So I just had to adjust my camera. So I, you know, I wanted to make sure you guys were seeing what I was doing. So um, as you see, I, I went down the piece. And like I was saying earlier, the hardest couple runs will be probably your first two runs because the whole piece will be um, pretty much, you know, um, wide. You have those wide gaps. And also, um, once you start threading, especially with that first run, it's going to be real loose or whatnot. But as you work your way down, you see everything, it pretty much uh, it starts coming together and senses together as you tighten on the piece and working your way down or whatnot. So, like I was saying earlier, you want to go under your leather cord, right? And once you get up under there, you want to make sure you know, your hand is back there or whatnot, holding your beads into place. There you go. All right. So then you pull your your thread and your uh, your needle and your thread. I'm gonna throw the piece. I'm sorry, I'm caught on my caught on my clipboard there. Okay. But yeah, you go through your piece. Whatnot. Now, don't try to, you know, I mean, sometimes you can get the needle through all three holes in one swipe, but it's not that deep, guys, I swear. Uh, if you have to go through one at a time, don't feel like no type of way about it. You just want to get through the beads. <laughs> so, okay, there it goes. All right, let me see if I can do this without being in y'all in your way so you can see, guys. Now you're going at the top of the leather cord, right? And like I said, I'm gonna go one at a time and get my needle through all of the beads. And it's all about repetition. The more you do this piece, guys, I swear you'll start flying through it. Oopsie, I almost start blocking y'all view. It's so hard to make these videos. That's why uh, I really need to get those little glasses I was looking at that got the camera. This would be a whole lot easier. That's me rambling, guys. But, um, yeah, the more you start doing this piece, you start flying through these guys. Like, it really takes me, like, maybe an hour. Well, I've really, it takes me under an hour to make one of these pieces from beginning to end or whatnot. So like I said, especially when you learn how to do the Chinese knot and then, uh, you know, uh, starting the piece or whatnot, once you get, you know, begin or whatnot, it's real, real simple. So I'm going to work your way down to your desired length. I think I'm going to make this maybe like a eight inch bracelet from a, uh, button to the hole or whatnot and uh, so I'm going to continue to work my way down this piece and I'm going to probably skip past and then I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to uh, end the piece and I'm going to show you guys how to do that because that's a whole process as well ending the piece uh, like I was saying earlier I got a piece I have to work on uh, later today probably after I get done with this video because I have to fix or whatnot, and I'm trying to figure out why that, you know, why did it snap like that? And it was kind of like at the end, but I might have had it too tight. Uh, it could be just the the thread of, uh, I mean, excuse me, the brand of beading thread that I'm using. It could be that. It could be the jagged edges, you know, in these beads. You got to think about it. These beads, uh, the inside holes, and you can feel it when you go through it or whatnot. And I'm thinking it may be uh, kind of shredding the, shredding the cord a little bit, but we're going to figure it out. Like I said, I might just need to go to a thicker, uh, thicker bead, I mean, excuse me, thicker thread or whatnot. I hope you guys can see this. I'm trying to do it in a way where you can see me. I'm not blocking you. There you go. Like I say, you're just going at the top. And that's it, guys. I'm gonna, like I say, I'm gonna go ahead and work my way down. So I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit. But as you see, it's coming together very, very nicely. 
Okay, so you see, I'm down at the bottom of where I pretty much want to uh, end my piece, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back in the piece and weave in, into it and uh, tie off like little knots or whatnot. So what I first want to do is, since I'm already on this side, I'm going to go ahead and tie a little a knot over here on this end. And what you're doing, just little half hitch knots. And uh, like I said, this is just going to secure the piece even more. Going back inside of the piece. Just doing that, reinforcing the piece or whatnot. So now, uh, and I'm going through the top of the, uh, of the leather cord doing this right here. Really doesn't matter. You could go through the bottom if you wanted to. But I'm just going to go through each individual bead itself. Like I said, I'm just going to tie half hitch knots in the piece. Hope you guys can see that. And what you're going to do is you're just going to go that, uh, what they call like a thread bridge or whatever. You're going to take your needle and just go, you know, up under that. And just tie a half hitch knot. And that's pretty much all you're gonna do to reinforce this piece itself. Uh, you can, uh, as far as like reinforcing it, you can go as far up as you want. Uh, normally, when I reinforce these pieces, I like to go maybe, I try to go up to at least maybe three rows up and uh, reinforce those with, you know, little knots, these half inch knots that I'm doing. And uh, I see I already, I did one, so I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. And that's what you wanna pretty much do. You wanna maybe do like two to three half hitch knots on each bead, going back through it or whatnot. Like I said, this is just gonna reinforce it Make it a whole lot more sturdier. And this is how you actually end off the piece. So, you see I did two. We'll go ahead and jump to the other side here. Same thing. Take a needle. Go up under that thread bridge right there. See that? Go up under that, tie your half hitch knot. Right. And like I say, you wanna do that too. And it's, it's really up to your discretion. Like I say, I like to make, I like to me personally, go up three rows reinforcing what I just stitched, doing these half hitch uh, knots or whatnot, just to make it a little bit more sturdy. But it's, it's, it's clearly totally up to your uh, discretion or whatnot, or what feels comfortable to you. So I'm gonna speed up the video. I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce this and then uh, pretty much you're doing the same thing on this uh, end down here. You're just gonna take this, uh, this little access cord of what you have thread on your uh, beading needle or whatnot and uh, go through the same thing uh, you want to reinforce those uh, those runs right there and to your discretion like I said I'm probably going to do maybe two or three runs or whatever but and uh, like I say you'll just cut off the access uh, cord of whatever you know after you reinforce it to your to, to your pleasing or your liking and uh like I said, I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to show you how to completely finish this piece. And uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that uh, with that wire that I had you guys. Uh, that little four inch piece of wire or whatnot. So. Okay, so we're at the end of the piece now. So what we're going to do next is gonna go ahead and tie off some knots on these two cords right here right now you don't want to 
there you go. You don't want to have them too close. You know, you don't want them like all the way like butted up on those, that uh, that last bead or whatnot. But you do want it kind of close or whatnot. So you're gonna do a underhand knot, overhand knot, underhand knot. Just a basic little knot is what you're gonna do. Depending on the type of cord, if you get that cheap leather cord or whatnot, you're going to want to be careful doing this process because I've done it plenty of times of just pulling too tight and I just snapped the leather cord or whatnot. So be careful doing that. Okay, so you see I got that tied. Same thing on this end. Simple little overhand knot. Get it parallel to your last knot that you just did on the other cord just to make it look even more crispier. Make it look more, you know, the part. Like I say, just make sure it's tight. Be careful. Like I said, if you got that cheap cord, you will break your cord and you will be mad. You got all the way down here to the bottom just to mess up after doing all of that beautiful thread work. <laughs> so save yourself the frustration, guys. So this is what you got now. So now your button of choice or whatnot, as you see, I got this beautiful compass um, bead. I mean, not bead, but a button that I chose. So I'm going to go ahead and slide that up there on my cord. Excuse me. Let's see. And on this part too, also, like I said, you want to be careful. I think I just hit a chunky part. But you want to be careful pulling this cord. So since I'm having such uh, problems going down on that cord, I'm just going to choose another cord because I don't want to risk tearing this cord which I'm close to doing it looks like <laughs> like my cord and got stuck man on my button y'all seen it there it go yeah let my button go nah but I'll see you and it's like yeah um uh, just take your time you I've done it so many times where I get to a the end of a piece and just sitting there rushing I'm excited that I made it all the way at the end of the piece and so many times I have messed up beautiful pieces from just rushing. So take your time, guys. So you want to slide your button, you know, as far up to give it, you know, yourself some room or whatnot. Because now what we're going to do is... Oh, that's the outside. I need to be in the inside. Yeah, let me take this off. I'm going to put this on the right cord I'm glad I looked at that you want to have make sure you're I'm glad that happened too want to make sure your your button is on the inside don't do it on the outside do it on the inside or you could do it on your outside it, it, to me it just looks better on the inside cord instead of the outside cord so boom slide your cord up and now we're gonna go ahead and add our uh, we're gonna twist our wire or whatnot so we can add that last last component to this and finish this piece. And I said four inches on the wire. You're gonna actually need probably more than that. And uh, if you got bell making pliers like these right here that I have in my hand right here, um, where I start, uh, I use the second notch of uh, on the bell making pliers or whatnot. Just go around, make your little, your little spiral. See, I said four inches, you're probably gonna need eight inches, nine inches 
of a wire or whatnot. And this should be a, a wide enough size, a big enough opening to get all four of your cords in because what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap our, our four cords in a, in this loop or whatever, the spiral, what we got going on, so. That. Slide this at the top so I can get it perfect at the top. All right. And this is what you should have. So, what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take all your four cords, right? Matter of fact, just to make it even more even, we know what I'm not even gonna do that because we're already at the end. It doesn't even matter. But go ahead and put all four cords in. And like I was saying, hopefully if you have bell making pliers, that second row right there on your pliers should be a big enough hole to get the rest of these cords in because you're gonna have to get these four cords in. And what you're gonna do is you just kind of like, you know, and this will determine, you know, the rest of the length on your piece or whatnot. So I think I'm gonna go about right there. I think that might be it right there as far as lengthwise. Like I said, I was shooting for like uh, an eight inch bracelet from a uh, button to the buttonhole. And if I was to go to get my uh, ruler, let me see. Pretty sure to be kind of close. Wrong side. Uh, let's see. Yo, that's seven right there. So I'm I'm close to that eight where I was trying to get to. So, like I say, you want to take your four cords. You want to slide them right in there. This might be tricky for you or whatnot, take your time. Like I say, you might have to go down a notch on your bell pliers, but you want it. So, you know what I'm saying? It'll be real, real tight or whatnot in there. Since those four cords really wasn't going through on the back end, I'm just gonna cut some cords. People won't notice it. It's still gonna look, you know, but you gotta kinda like adjust or whatnot because you really want it as tight as possible when you uh, clamp down on the other end and cinch everything in. It just, that's what's gonna complete the piece and it's gonna make it sturdy. And like I said, you don't want those cords to be able to slip out or whatnot, so. So, let me see. Come down. might be able to get the four cords in. They're just so, they're so thick or whatnot. But let me try without cutting. If I, for the sake of this video, if I can't get it on the first couple tries, I'm gonna just go ahead and cut these cords like I was saying earlier what I wanted to do. So like I say, you, you really won't be able to see that part anyway because uh, the button's gonna be covering it or whatnot. But uh, in, a, in a perfect world, like I said, I've gotten the four cords in. You might have to do it one at a time. I could try it. Matter of fact, let me try to see if I can do it one at a time and get these cords in or whatnot. That could be the way. And whatever works, man. That's that's one thing I love about jury making. There's not a right or wrong way. Once you get the basics in hand or whatnot, it's pretty much whatever innovation you come up with, new ways of thinking, you might create some, you know, something fly or whatnot, and a different style, a different way of creating when it comes to the jury making or whatnot, so. See, I got one cord in. I'm trying to slide this other one up. And 
Like I said, I might not be able to get all of them in, but you just want to get a majority of them in. Like I say, long as you um, you have it tight, so when you crimp up on those cords or whatnot, you don't want nothing moving. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. That's why I had to take those off because I was just looking at it, it was so loose. I'm like, yeah, that's that's just waiting to come apart. Just waiting to come apart. So let me see if I can get this one in. I think I'm gonna rock with it. Come here. And as always, the videos when I'm doing jury by just at the house by myself. I swear I fly through this, but I'm not meant to fly through this one because I got to show you guys how to actually create it. So. See, I could rock with that right there. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Cause like I said, people aren't gonna be able to see it. Like I say, you're gonna press up on that, and uh, I'm gonna show you guys that, and then I'll show you the whole finished process of what this uh, triple wrap cuff bracelet, leather triple wrap cuff bracelet is gonna look like uh, when it's done. Okay, so as you see, I was able to get one more cord, so. What I'm going to do is that third cord that I can't find a hole. I mean, I can't find space or whatnot. I'm just going to go ahead and just clip that off. We're just going to clip that guy off. Like I say, when you uh, cinch it in or whatnot, you won't be able to see that anywhere or whatnot. So, as you see, I got it where I want it at as far as uh, lengthwise. This is the length I want it at. So you're just gonna take your chain nose pliers, kind of get up in the loop if you can itself, and you're just gonna press down. Press down real, real tight, and you wanna make sure that this is, is pretty much firm, press down. Like I said, this is gonna cinch your whole piece in. And if you have some, uh, flat nose or flat head pliers you can use those as well but that's how you're doing as you see I'm just I'm just mushing it and whatnot you want to do that all the way around like I said just to make sure everything is secure because you don't want that cord to move once you lock it in or whatnot that's the name. That's how you make sure it's sturdy. So I think I pretty much got this one tight. And then like, you know, just tug on it. If you see anything moving, you pretty much need to probably uh, squeeze on it a little bit more. Like so. This is pretty much done though, guys. Then your access cord and go ahead and cut that off on the other end get it close as possible to those wires or whatnot but like I said you won't be able to see it anyway you won't be able to see it anyway guys and there you have it um, leather triple wrap cuff bracelet Chinese knot or whatnot put it on see how it fits on me I'm gonna do it this way Oops. I think this one I might have made it a little too tight I don't think I did though in fact I know I didn't I just gotta get this around here let me see there we go. Slide that down a little bit more. There we go. Put that on for you guys just to show you how it's going to look. Like I said, I really love these cuff bracelets. They're just so beautiful. They're so versatile. You can do so much with it or whatnot. As far as like the beads that you can use. And that's pretty much it, guys. 
leather triple wrap cuff bracelet. Thank you guys for watching today's content. Any questions, concerns, or comments, please feel free to hit me up on uh, on this platform, the channel itself, the YouTube channel, or you can go to uh, you can actually Gmail me at Sar David at um, excuse me Sar David eighty three at Gmail .com or whatnot. I'm just getting caught up in the in the beauty of this piece, and if it's so snug, it's perfect. But yeah. Any questions, concerns, comments, or anything like that, please feel free to hit up the channel. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing a whole lot more of these Manifest Mondays, showing you how to make some of these beautiful creations of what I make or whatnot. Because this right here is gorgeous. I really like the color combination. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was easy. Uh, any, any, anything you want to add as far as like, you know, my teaching tech uh, techniques, or any critiques or whatnot to just help, you know, teach the family or whatnot, please feel free, let me know, guys, and I got you. Whatever you need me to do, man, to make this a whole lot easier for you. But peace to the family from Brother Divine, another uh, Manifest Monday in the book, and I hope you guys, man, have a happy beating with this right here. So peace to the family, man. High prosperity and high vibrations.